Now let's look at the processing layer. Oh, did I say layer here? No, tier, sorry. I've been saying layer. I've really been meaning to say tier all this time. The presentation tier, uh, and now the processing tier. There's two different kinds of servers that we want to talk about in the processing tier. The first one is called the login server, and that's the first server that you interact with in World of Warcraft. This is not uncommon for other systems as well. The idea is that you go to a gateway server. Now remember, a server is just a computer that's connected to the internet. In this case, it's got some software from World of Warcraft on it, or if we were some other you know, online service, it would have software from that service. And in this processing tier, uh, and, uh, sorry, and on the, the login server is part of the processing tier. It's part of the things that have to happen in order to make the system go, right? That's the processing tier. Presentation tier is about display. Processing tier is about the logic and the algorithms and all the, all the computation that goes on for the application. And then the data tiers we'll talk about later is obviously for storing the information of the application. Okay, so this processing tier breaks into two parts. First part is the login server. The login server is where you go first. It's the gateway to the application. So you might imagine that you type in your password and name into that login server, right? It then retrieves your account information, says, yeah, you're okay to go. And then it directs you, oh, uh, it also downloads patches in a thing, in, in a system like um, Warcraft, constantly new parts are coming out. Whatever you downloaded last week is probably out of date and there's some new software that has to come down and replace some of the old software. And so these patches are bits and pieces of software that come down and replace certain bits and pieces of your current system. So the login server is responsible for that as well. Validates your account, logs you in, gets back your account information, downloads, pass, uh, downloads patches, and then directs you to the server that you're really going to interact with most called the game server. Okay, so game server, or um, as I called it here, the world server. They call them world servers because they are responsible for a world. It's the world of Warcraft, right? The world is that immersive graphical um, user experience where you move through territory. And so each of these territories exists on one or more servers that are called the world servers. So what does the world server do? First of all, it's part of the processing tier, right? The process processing tier is the algorithms, the logic, the computation. The login server is one part, a relatively simple part. The world server or the um, game server is a, a more sophisticated part that, that really has all the logic. So what does it do? The, it, um, it manages your world. It, it manages you in interaction with all the other characters that happen to be in your portion of the world at this moment. Um, it allows you, it, it, it kind of, you might say it carries the rules of the game. So what happens when you attack a monster? What happens when you pick up an item off the ground? What happens when you trade with somebody else? What happens when the monster dies and you loot the monster? You get back all of these goodies from the monster's death. All of those things are managed on the server. So one thing you can imagine is that it's not, it's not very good. They wouldn't want to put all those rules on your local hard drive because if they could, then for one thing, they have to keep updating them. But for another thing, you know, the people who play World of Warcraft are no, are no dummies. They'll, they'd go in and they would hack the software on their computer and they would change the rules so that they get all the benefits, right? And they don't have to do anything and they can fly around killing anybody they want because they have the rules right there on their computer and they can figure out a way of circumventing those rules. So the rules never make it down to your computer so you can't mess with them. The rules stay on the server. And they're the logic of the interaction. We'll talk tons and tons and tons as we go on about that logic of interaction or those algorithms. Um, but for now, understand that that's where they live. They live on the world server. Um, they do maintenance things like check if you're still online. Did your connection go down? Um, they help you communicate with other users. They do all of these things to manage your experience. They also, the game servers, also control all of the um, objects and creatures that are not being controlled by people. So the world of Warcraft, that world, is populated by people who are in control of avatars, you might call them, or characters, and also characters or avatars or images or animations, whatever you want to call them, that are not controlled by, by players, and they come in two varieties. The helpful kind, which are called non-player controlled characters, and the bad guys, right? The creeps, they call them in other games, and those are, the, um, those are called in, in uh, World of Warcraft terminology, mobs, mobile Mobile uh, bad guys. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure mobile what's, but they're mobile bad guys, and they're controlled by these game servers that tell them what to do, that tell them how they interact. Okay, so the game server itself also has some storage. It has what might be called a RAM cache. RAM is random access memory, 
if you you may not be familiar with this I don't want to I don't want to dwell on it but you have a hard drive right your hard drive is persistent long-term memory on your computer and RAM random access memory is what's going on right now you don't want to go back and forth to the hard drive for operations that are really quickly or that that uh, operate really quickly that need a fast turnaround you want to go to the RAM the RAM is the memory it's memory just like hard drive memory but it's temporary memory it's dynamic memory it's memory that you can use on the fly very quickly to do quick things and so we have a cache as well in the RAM of the of the world servers all the most important information like you're in the middle of a battle with five other players and things are flying back and forth has to happen really quickly microseconds really matter in those in those cases that information would be held in RAM and then when there's something to be stored long term like for example you go up a level or something like that then it would go to the long term storage on the data server okay so so far we talked about the presentation layer the presentation layer is that fat client that you that you download from um, from Blizzard and controls the rendering of your user experience there is the, pro the processing tier that has login servers that are your gateway and world or game servers that control the, control the flow of the game and communicate back to your fat client to tell you what's going on and, um, and also have the rules of the game and also control all of the characters that are not, um, that are not personally controlled. 